I didn't realize how long it takes for men to come. I've been waiting and waiting. I've got some questions that I need to fire away <laughs> about love, life, dating and relationships. It's like chivalry is dead and the etiquette of dating doesn't exist anymore. I just need someone to show me how it's done to come here and come correct. We're finally here. Come correct, powered by Fireway Pizza. And yes, I'm back like I never left. If you miss me. My name is Bobby Schroeder and I do a lot of things. What do I not do? Except for illegal things. <laughs> I get money, I get money, I get money in all sorts of ways, you know what I'm saying? She like them boys from the VK. He <laughs> not have flip that money three ways, you know what I'm saying? I'm from up top, um, New York. Um, my name is Akil Polar. I kill Avalon Tyreek Polar, but they call me Bobby Schmurder. In the hood, they used to call me Chubby 730 Loco, but you know, I go as Bobby Schmurder now. International Badman, international superstar. Call it what you want now. Huh? You think you're gonna come correct for today's date? Is she gonna come correct for today's date? <laughs> Yo, listen, they kicked me out of like five elementary schools. I've never been in junior high school. I don't know what high school look like that. I'll put me in juvenile and thing like that. I'll force them blood clot. Yo, group home and thing like that. I some bad, yeah, I some badness, you know. <laughs> some blood clot badness, yo. I'm to them. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hey. Hi. <laughs> my name is Bobby. Nice to meet you, Bobby. Hold on, I'm hold on, Cheyenne. Hold on. <laughs> my name is Bobby Schmader. Bobby Schmader. Yes. Nice to meet you. I'm Cheyenne. Shy, shy. Shy, shy, yeah? I give nicknames when I like somebody. Yeah, you make me a little bit shy. A little bit shy. My face turned purple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He said, damn, I hate a shy bitch. Then I ate a shy bitch. She ain't shy no more. She changed her name to my bitch. <laughs> well, it's nice to meet you and welcome to London. Thank you. I like London. Um, what would you like to drink? Champagne. Wait, we water? We drinking beverage or we drinking liquor? Whatever you want. I got my sexy voice on. Let me know. Yeah? Yeah, so let me know which one we drinking. I want to say it in a sexy voice. Okay. Um, we're going to drink alcohol. Champagne. Champagne, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Bobby, do you like to be called Bobby yes, or Schmerta? What can I call you? You call me Akil, Akil Avalon, Tariq, you call me Akil, Avalon, okay. Tariq, whatever you want. Whatever I want, okay. Yeah, um, so, tell me about yourself. Um, I grew up in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I didn't go to junior high school or high school. I had a little... I had a little rugged muffin pass. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm an ex drug dealer. I won't lie, I like to get everything out because I don't like nothing to get out. I like and honesty. Think, you know, honesty is my best policy. I now run corporate businesses. I got businesses now. So I got like six, seven LLCs. I make money off of three, four of them already. You got yearly salaries. Um, the next three or four, I'm planting seeds. So, you know, I'm very busy right now. I'm 29. I do music. Yeah. Um, I'm writing a book. Um, yeah? What's your book about? Your life? Or? Yes. Amazing. It's about negative to positive. I like that. How we could turn negative um, behavior into positive behavior. Outcomes. Negative behavior to positive outcomes. I love stuff like that. Like big old personal development and life stories. Do you mind telling me a bit about like, you said you were a bit of a ragamuffin. Did you say that? Ragamuffin love it. They gave me the ragamuffin love. She wanted the ragamuffin love. Me give her the ragamuffin love. And I yeah. was a, I was a, I was a, I was young. Yeah. I did not control my temper. I feel like I was too ambitious. I did yeah. not control my temper. It's Bobby, bitch, but throw this motherfucker. <laughs> it's Bobby, bitch. <laughs> and I feel like, um, how would I say this? Not around the wrong crowd, yeah. but I did the wrong things for, wrong, for the wrong people. Okay, yeah. And when I did the wrong things for the wrong people, it put me in a certain position where I had to sit down and look, look at my life and say, I, I got kids to take care of. Now, not my kids, because I don't have kids, but. Um, my friends that passed from what we was doing, kids now, I gotta take care of them. They 14, they 13, they look up to me and they ain't got no father. So 
I grew up with no father. I know how that looked like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love my father, though, you know what I'm saying? He's been in jail since I was like two months. So, yeah. Yeah. So growing up like that, and you know, we grew up a little rough and stuff like that. So I got in a lot of trouble growing up. I've been in and out the um, system since I was 12 till I was 26. Once to 29, I just got on parole. Oh my God. Yes. Wow. It's a very, very long time. Yeah, 12 till I was 29. So how, how was life for you? Like. So before I was like a rapper and stuff, I was like a hood celebrity. Yeah. Like a hood star. So I was like, I was the guy in the hood with all the drugs, all the guns. Drugs? <laughs> guns? So I grew up ahead of my time. So I, like, I didn't really have a childhood. I was on the corner yeah. since I was like four. Since, sorry? Yeah, I was on the corner since I was four. Four? My, my babysitter was drug dealers. My babysitters, they were drug dealers. You know what I mean? Oh my God. And my mom was always had to go to work and stuff like that. So when she had to go to work all the time, she was a whole bunch of shit. So I had to stay with the drug dealers. By the time I was seven, they used to put stuff in my bags and stuff like that. So I was like a mule, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was a mule by the time I was like seven. Oh and then God. I was selling water on the corner. And after that, by the time I was 12, I was selling drugs. I didn't go to junior high school, didn't go to high school. That's like, that's I so crazy. I caught my first crack charge when I was 12 years old. Selling crack at 12? Wait, sorry, what? 12? I, yes, I caught my first crack charge when I was 12. Oh my God, but you're like- 2007. But you're just a child. I wasn't, a, I think you know what's crazy? is because like the guys I was selling drugs with, their kids were my age, and they used to come home from school and they just be looking at me, and I just be looking at them, and they'd be like, they will pass the room and they will go back in the kitchen. They be like, Daddy, what the fuck this nigga doing about? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I'll be talking about shit. I'm like, Yo, thing, yo, come, why you kid looking at us like that? Come on, go back in the thing. And he's like, Yo, they looking at you. I was bad. I was really bad. It's crazy. Do you think? But I don't want to talk too much. I want to save everything for the book. Yeah, 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 don't say too much. Yes, this is a lot, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is our first date. It yeah, isn't it? It's a heavy first date. <laughs> <laughs> I know I won't go too deep into it, but with that, but my one question is off the back of that. Do you feel like you were robbed from a childhood? Um, I feel like it helped me later on in life become a man. Yeah. I had no choice but to be a man. What's your relationship like with your mum? It's like mom. It's like my, my mama, that's like my mama and my big sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me and my mom been down since 94. August 4th, 1994, we been down. <laughs> that's when I was a boy. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> that's my motherfucking dog! She showed me that she always did. She was always there. She was always there. Every bit, she, you know what I'm saying? She was always there. Yeah. Um, Mother's love. Yeah, unconditional. It show really, really is. Yeah, she cursed me out. She was like, this is a black stupid motherfucker. Did I tell you about these niggas? I'm like, my back, my... I always got in trouble from my friends when I was growing up. Yeah. And she always told me, she was like, can you stop with these motherfuckers? You only got a bunch of people around you, better stop this shit. Who the fuck you think you are? Oh. <laughs> yeah. So would you say that, like, you, uh, was you like a naughty kid? I feel like, I feel like I didn't listen to her. You didn't? No, she be like, yo, this nigga don't listen for shit since oh. I was a kid. But she always, she, she's a Pisces, so she always showed me what unconditional. She don't care, she can just keep going back. She be first with like, you and she, she like, here she go. You know, she always there. Yeah. And she'll curse you out, but she always gonna be there. What, um, what was jail like for you? A wake up call. Yeah. It was a wake up call. I think that this bit was a wake up call because like, I see people that, I was in juvenile with, and like 13, 14 when we was locked up, 17, 16, I was locked up. And I seen them when I was 23, 24, later, years later, 10 years, four years later, or whatever, I mean, 10 to whatever years later. And when I seen them, they had like life sentences. Yeah. So it's like, it show you like the blessings sometimes you had and that could happen to you. And you had to like, you had to like walk like a different path. Once I know that I had to rap and all the other shit, so I had to like separate that, knowing that people where I came from were doing the same shit where I was doing. Yeah. That they ain't, might not see outside of it. Man. So I had to like, I had to fall back from that shit. Yeah. Type shit. Was it? Is it hard though? Because I kind of feel like with the <coughs> well, cards you're dealt with and your life and your environment and stuff and trying to make better choices. Was it hard? I feel like God blessed me with it. Everything is hard, but I feel like God blessed me with a way to get through it. Yeah. So once he gave me like 
the strength to get through it. Don't matter if the fight gonna be hard. Once you get through it, you don't really look, after you get through it, you look back on it like, yeah, it was hard, but I got through it. So you just be so thankful that you got through the shit. It's like, yeah. you know? How did you get so mentally strong? I did a lot of shit on my own. Like survival? Yeah, cause I was the youngest outside. I was the baby, all my friends are like four to five years old than me. Two, two, four, three, four, two, three, four, and like five years old than me. Like from two to five years old than me. Yeah. So I had to grow up older. So when I was four, they was, they was um, fucking nine and eight. So when they jumped, I had to jump too. And yeah. my, I had to make sure my leap matched up with theirs because I was, you know what I'm saying? Because I used to got that, oh, you too young to be um, leaving the block was, with us. You know what I'm saying? So I had to, Always show, nigga, yeah. I'm going outside. I ain't about to leave me on the block. Fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> about to leave me over here. So you <laughs> about to leave me over here, nigga. Fuck out here. to miss out, nigga. I'm outside. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out So do you think, like, being the youngest and, like, that lifestyle that you always had to kind of show up more, just do that extra just so you can be seen and be heard? Yes, I feel like so. That's why I know when I see it because I was there. I feel like because I was the youngest. Uh, I like the first time I was in the hood. So I was respected when I was young because I was like really bad. I kicked out like five elementary schools. Do y'all call it elementary out here in London? Uh, primary schools. Yeah, I got kicked out like five primary schools what? in like the worst neighborhood. Am I hearing that correctly? How the hell does a kid get kicked out of five schools? So oh I was like really bad. So I was like really famous when I was young. And then by junior high school, everybody knew me. So I didn't go to junior high school. But um, I felt like after going through all that shit, it was like, yeah, what the fuck? So it was like they knew me already, so it was just like easy. Yeah, so, but do you think like going on to when it comes to like societies, like the areas kind of like, it would be like the, like over here we have like estates and stuff like that. So What's it'd that? be like for you guys, it would be the projects. So we have like estates, so it's kind of like, Sometimes with certain environments, there's going to be certain areas where they just put loads of people. And oh yeah, that's why I grew up in like, a bad place. So when I grew up in a bad place, it was like, what was the question again before that? Yeah, so basically I was trying to say like growing up in like the projects, so like in no, the before sticks. that, you um, don't even remember. I don't even remember. Here, take a hit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, grew up I think in I'm getting project. high off the smoke Grew up in a project. <laughs> I'm just getting high off the fumes right now. Do you think, like going, basically I'm trying to say, you keep saying like you're you were a bad kid and you didn't yeah. listen, but do you feel like you didn't have the best start in life simply no, because we, of your environment you were brought in? We did because my cousins is like lawyers and cops and shit right now and they fucking they good people, they good kids, like they civilians. I just like nigga I ain't listening to that shit um oh, thing Ozzy say the fuck out of you y'all about to listen, they like, yo, you bad. I'm like, I ain't listening to that shit, man. Y'all get I thought I was a black sheep. Me and my brother was a black sheep. Yeah. And I was like the extra black sheep because he kind of, <clears throat> he kind of like, he got married to the streets. I got married to the um, the business. Yeah. So it was two different things. Very My different. My two sons, but he oldest. He got married to the streets. I'm like, I left it alone. I'm like, man, man you ain't tired of losing niggas, man. Yeah. You know, so when, I love him. When, when did you start doing music? Like taking it serious or? Yeah, what was the journey? So talk me through like your journey. I used to run from the police a lot when I was young. Yeah. And I ran into my son um apartment one time when I was young and they was doing like gang music and the police looking for me so I couldn't go outside for like two, three hours. So I, okay. I had a lot of energy. When I was young I couldn't sit down. I was like always yeah. like this. So I was always like this. Until I started smoking like a lot of weed and I could chill now. Before I'd be like all day, so I just did a song there and they were like, Yo, you can rap and like, I ain't taking that shit serious and they they liked that shit. They kept pushing me to do songs. One of my mans that died he built a studio in my house when I was like 14. And I never used it until he died. And then when he died, I used it. I was making songs about him. And after that, I just stopped making songs until like later on. I, one of my friends got killed when I was like 19. Oh my God. And I made Hot Nigga. Yeah, I remember that song. In the hood, they kept asking me like, like shoot this shit, shoot this shit. But I was just wilding like, I was like a, and back in my old days when I was young, Okay, this yeah. is when I was young. Okay, let me get some water first before I say yeah. this. <laughs> this is honest. I'm gonna like, that's why I'm be doing interviews. So, <laughs> no, but it's real, it's, it's nice. Back in the days when I was young, I was like a serial shooter. Serial what? 
So it's like when they start telling me to do music, they like, I'm like, man, I ain't doing that. I was drug dealing. I had, I had drug houses over here, drug house workers over here, workers over here, drug yeah. houses. And shot up the whole fucking hood and shit. I ain't, I ain't about to do none of that shit. They like, man, you could do it. And yeah. I didn't believe in it. But because I was selling drugs, they started buying me shit. And I'm like, wait, I ain't got to spend my money? You know what I mean? <laughs> so they started bribing me. And once they started bribing me, I did the song. They bought me a bunch of shit, paid for the video, okay. took me shopping, this, that, this, that, like 30 motherfuckers outside. Best thing in my life. I did not know what was going to happen. I was just enjoying the luxury of the money. I said, thank you, baby. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, because I've been working hard. My back hurt. I got to yell at these niggas all day. You know what I'm saying? A little <laughs> vacation will hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and long story short, we did the video. And it went crazy because, as I told you, I was like a, a hood celebrity in New York. Yeah. And they like, this motherfucker rapping? What the fuck this nigga doing rapping? This is crazy ass nigga doing rapping. And it just took off. The yeah. first song I dropped by myself, it just took off. I think for me, like, actually, when I think about that song, I think the most viral part was, because um, I feel like over here in the UK, like, our culture, gang culture, drug culture, it's not as strong as it is in the States. So... It's, I, it's, it's yeah. cool over here. In the <laughs> States, it's dusty. It's, the States, it's, it's dusty. crazy. How you say, dusty? <laughs> dusty. Dust, it's dusty. <laughs> And it's, and it's crazy, because I, I remember the line, it was like, I've been selling crack since I was in the fifth grade, or something, and I was like... But I don't want people to think in the States, that's average. I was, oh, like a, I was one of a kind. I was okay. like, in every hood, I was probably like that 1% that you'll see that grew up with the older guys, because usually people grow up with the people, they, like, they, they age group. Yeah. I grew up with older guys, so, and I was extra bad when I came out the I was like, my grandmother is Jamaican, she called me, my great-grandmother, she called me Frisky when I came out the pussy. Before I could talk, she just called me Frisky. I was just like... <laughs> Just like, always, yeah. yeah. 80, I got 80. Pop, pop, 80. Pop, 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 80. Dig, 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 baby. You know what I'm saying? So I smoke and chill. So, smoke and chill. I smoked since I was 10. My mom was happy when I started smoking. They tried to put me on medication. Yeah. Glad they didn't do that shit. I'm not, uh, yeah, for real, <laughs> for real. So like, because you're like the way that you are, and because you've gone to jail and your lifestyle from before, like you really are about that life. How do you was about I feel like that life? If you I'm say, about a business life now. Yeah, you are a business life, but I'm saying in the sense of like get the, get the legs crossed. Can <laughs> yeah. somebody get the legs crossed? <coughs> do they got the legs crossed? Yeah. No, because and get the feet dangling. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's kind of like. You, if you say something, you're gonna do it. You're gonna action it. You're not just rapping on a track just to say it. I talk about know? I talk about my past because I know where all the the young guys are going through and what they going through. Because somebody turns 16 every day. Yeah. Think about it. Somebody turns 13 every day, 18. Somebody getting locked up every day. It's life. Motherfuckers getting sentenced to life every day. So I feel like that so point, sure. they I could relate to them through what we've been through, what my brother's been through. My brother's is locked up for life. People I was getting expelled with in the first grade with. They doing 53 to life right now, off a of, of, um, conspiracy that we came off of, or 98 to life right now. And I did seven, I mean six years. But I know we all came from first grade together, we was in suspension together or getting expelled. So I know how deep it could go. Yeah. And like, you know what I'm saying? So I see it all, like type shit. So every yeah. time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, mamas go through it. The whole, Everyone everybody go through it. The kids go it. through it. Now the kids ain't got to grow with the father, same shit we done did. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm up for, I take care of the kids and shit. a whole bunch of shit. So, yeah. you know. How do you deal with, like, for example, like, because Joe, like, you're dancing and stuff. That brings me joy. It brings you for joy. For all the shit I got to do. Shit, it'll bring me joy. Yeah. <laughs> Leave me alone. But let me dance, motherfucker. You'd rather me dance than be no, like, but that's what, How do you deal with, like, you see, like, the, the internet and trolls and, and just people just being judgmental and stuff? The nerds. <laughs> yeah. How do I deal with the nerds? Yeah, how do you deal with that? The nerds. What the fuck? <laughs> But that's what I mean, though, because you're really just about that life, and then you've got people like warriors. If you like... can sit there and type that and do all that shit, you're a fucking nerd, okay? You're... Nobody told you a fucking nerd, okay? You're a fucking geek, and I don't mind civilians. Civilian mind state is like it's not like shut up. It's like yeah. you don't know no better. Yeah. So if you could do that, it's not like you don't know no better. You like, like how old? Especially how old are you doing that? What the fuck? So it's like trolls. Who gives a trolls fuck? Trolls will be trolls. Yeah. 
I feel like if you a troll, it's like, I don't want to know you. Like, you a troll, get your ass away from me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one of those people. Like, you a troll, get the fuck away. That's what you do for a living. Get the fuck away from me. You, you dork. Like, what the fuck? You know, I feel like I don't fuck with trolls. But I don't know trolls. Yeah. I probably do know them, but they don't tell me they Yeah, trolls. and they're not going to tell you that they're trolls or the keyboard warriors. So, but that's the, like, you want to, that's the life you want to live? And you want to call that victorious? Yeah, no that's way. That's not victorious. That's no like way. bogus. Yeah, I feel like... You've seen a lot of things, like your life is super crazy, so your outlook on life must be absolutely insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, like with everything that you've gone through, everything that you've experienced and everything that you've seen, lived, done, how, how do you stay yeah. so grounded? Um, going to see, going to see my God kids. Yeah. Going to see my God kids, they remind me where I came from, they remind me what I'm doing it for. I got my youngest God kid, he one years old. His daddy died like two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, 2022. He might be two this year. So, yeah, Uncle Chewy. He used to be like real little. Yeah. So I'll show you him after. He's real cute. Yeah, yeah, show me. And um, they keep me grounded. They keep me like, I'm not, I'm not, I can't go for feelings no more. I got to go for reality. Yeah. And, you know, as much as you want to go for pride and feelings sometimes, you can't do that shit. Yeah. And that'd be the goal. That'd be like, nigga, make you feel good. But it's not about feeling good. Exactly. As I said, it's about doing something that you don't want to do. So that's how I stay grounded, just by thinking of my God kids and thinking yeah. like, all right, it's bigger than me. For real. And what is your reality? Reality is bigger than me. Yeah. It's for the kids. What's the hardest thing you've ever had to do in your life? Put my pride to the side. <clears throat> I'm a Leo, if you don't know. Yeah. So I'm a lion. A lion's pride is like... They could be the littlest motherfucker, but that, that spirit is like, just like a big ferocious motherfucker running around. You got a big ass lion. You hear that shit going off, boy, see? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, whoop whoop! That's that <laughs> lion, nigga. That shit running loose, motherfucker. You better call somebody <laughs> and call help, nigga. Call back. <laughs> <laughs> you better call somebody. <laughs> His nuts. But it's putting the um, humbling the lion is the hardest thing I have to do yeah. all the time. So once I be able to humble the lion, I master myself. Nobody can control me now. What's your thoughts on mental health? Mental health is serious. I smoke some blood, crack ganja. That. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now for comfort, some smurred out pocket, keep me seeing you, see me? Keep me nice on you, see me? Rrr, like an airplane on air, blood, clad air mode, see me? And thing like that. So I think mental health is very serious. Please do not take on the capacity of your mental health because the trolls or whatever Google or whatever the fuck internet or whatever the fucking people program them tell you to do. Your mental is worth everything, okay? God, God, God did not make Instagram. Instagram is man-made. Yeah, okay? Real. You understand that, motherfucker. Don't let them live your life. Your mental health is everything. Make sure whatever make you happy, you stay happy, but don't. Listen, too much sugar called diabetes, a blood clot. Yeah. What do you want out of life? <laughs> Well, God put us here for reality. I want the real, baby. I want the real spill. I want the shit that everybody ain't going to do. I want that love that motherfuckers are going to like, Oh, we got to do this because everybody said, I want that fuck that. We give a fuck about these niggas, baby. Fuck these niggas. Yeah, I mean, I want that shit. Yeah. I want that, that shit. That shit. That shit. Yeah. Yes. Love, I like your rings, by the way. She watching nigga, y'all. She watching nigga, she watching nigga, she watching me, she watching me. She, she see the brakes now, y'all. You know she heard them things a couple of brakes now. <laughs> Thank you. I got this nice. one. I got this one from London. Yeah? Yes. How are you liking London? Love London. But not when people try to pay me and then pay me later. But hey, I love London. I like London. Yeah? London got pretty girls. All the girls yeah? Are pretty. yeah? Everybody's pretty. I don't know if the girls are pretty. I said, oh shit, what the ass is this? It was hard to go back to America, boys. Yeah? <laughs> like the London girls, yeah? And the, and the accent, my legs start shaking. Look, she start talking. Talk. Talk. Look. How are you liking London? <laughs> That's what they do, that's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> so, what makes you a man? <clears throat> Doing the things you don't want to do when you got to do it. Yeah? Like what? 
I feel like putting your pride to the side is the biggest thing. Yeah. When you gotta put your pride to the side is the biggest thing for a man. Well, the biggest thing for me as a man. Like having to put my pride to the side for the people I care about because I know I gotta do things for them and take care of them, so. Mm. I used to be very prideful. I used to see my shit with a chest on me. Now I see a shit with my mind and my third eye. <laughs> Sometimes I be wanting to go out the way I want to, but I can't fully because I got to think about them sometimes. So it's like, you know, if you're used to just doing things a certain way okay. for so long, you get indoctrinated with it. And then when you got to stop, it's like, damn, fuck. I just talk. Yeah. So it's shit like that, man. You know, putting the pride to the side is the hardest thing I feel like as a man. Yeah, I'd have to agree. agree. How do you want to agree? You need to agree. <laughs> no, I'd have to agree what I think. <laughs> On dates, would you expect women to split the bill? Or would you pay it? I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna pay it, I don't split it. If you're gonna take me out, you're gonna take me out. If I'm gonna take you out, I'm gonna take you out. But if I'm definitely trying to get the fuck out of here, look, I gotta go. Look, yeah, I, I hate to take you to drink. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I got to um, What's your thoughts on women in the adult industry? What you mean, porn? Yeah, porn, OnlyFans. <laughs> So, you know, I used to have um, a bad past. You know, I had a lot of relationships with the adult industry. Okay. With girls in the adult industry when I came home. You know, I've been to prison. So, when you come to prison, you, be, you come home, you be very vulnerable. And you need some things done to you that you probably think that, you know, that your girl, your wife ain't gonna do to you probably, you know what I'm saying? These girls gonna do some things to you that you don't see. You know? <laughs> I know she gonna do this. I see her do this shit. <laughs> I done seen this motherfucker do that thing. Like, you gonna do that shit to me, nigga? I want this shit from the side of me. What's up from the side of <laughs> What the fuck was that? This yeah, shit gonna bring her friends. <laughs> so it's like. This guy is crazy. I had, I had, a, um, I, I, I've been with like nine girls in the adult industry. Nine girls? Now you know six years is a long time, baby. You can't be tripping. You know, and they was like, Bobby, you should do OnlyFans. I got offered like a quarter million to do OnlyFans, but I told him I couldn't do it. What? Quarter million for OnlyFans? Because I do a lot of non-profit for this um, thing. And then after I went celibate, I just stopped, I just stopped with the porn stars. I said, I can't do this no more, y'all. Yeah. I'm just, I can't do this no more. I think I need a new wave in the <laughs> is, he, is he just zoning out and singing right now? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking for something special now. Yeah, something special now. Something for a lifetime. Que lo que loco de la cabeza de amo, baby, de amo, mua, mi amor, mua. Gracias. Do you find, though, like, having those experiences with women from, like, the adult industry, it's going to be hard to kind of, like, break away from that? I think it helped me. I think it's, my wife is going to really appreciate it one day. Yeah? She's going to say, damn, baby, I feel like you told me some shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it done taught me some shit, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you ever cheated? I don't cheat. He doesn't cheat. Bobby? I was about to cheat one time, but I didn't cheat. I was about to cheat. I was like 16. Yeah? Well, I don't cheat. I'd rather, like, I only, I only been like three or four relationships out of my life. Really, because I don't really play with people, and I don't want people to play with me. I know people be playing games. Yeah. So I'd be like, yo, you're not even ready for that, so you need to just, you know, sometimes sit down but you know she they try you know they gonna always try yeah i think i think as well like resistance when it comes to cheating it's more like the temptation of just having to like resist i don't know i'm too i'd be too high to be lying i ain't got time to be lying i'm too gangster for that shit. i'm like motherfucker nigga who you think you got me running around and creeping and shit the fuck out of here yeah it's easy to <laughs> my thing what the fuck going on? i think y'all it's important <laughs> block. is this even a date this isn't even a date anymore I'm He's not talking to me. Do you go on many dates? Um, is a group date considered a date? Like, if we go out with our friends. Like, like double date? Like, yeah. triple, like a bunch of people then. Yeah, like a double date. Like a gang thing. people. Group date? What do you think this is? Like mm, a gang people. Not really. It, it can be. Like a double date, group date, but not an intimate date. I think I've been on, the last intimate date I've been on, was, I was like 18, 19, I think, like just me and them. Do you prefer group dates? Nowadays, yeah, because I think I think people don't really be knowing what they want nowadays. Like they let yeah. Instagram tell them for them on social media or whatever. 
So I'll be trying to play with myself. How do you feel about relationships now? And do you find it harder to find a decent relationship with fame? Hell yeah, especially with social media. I feel like motherfuckers is like their relationships be programmed or some shit. Like if they tell you to feel this way, you gonna feel this way. Oh, you gonna fuck? You gonna read some shit on Instagram? Come on, play with me, motherfucker. Don't be playing with me, nigga. I'm gonna What the hell wrong with you, nigga? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that shit takes a toll on relationships. So I, if I be in a relationship with a girl, we can't, be, she ain't no Instagram, ain't nothing Instagram shit. Yeah. We gotta be like, we locked in the cell. We, we, yeah. gotta be like, we locked in the cell, old fashioned, mentals is like here, motherfucker. They can't fuck with us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Type shit. So, so. What's, what's your thoughts on like a traditional relationship? We get money. Yeah. We invest together. We, so that's why I feel like when you say, even when you say bust down the bill, like when we invest together, our money is your money. So shit like that. So we could have our separate bank accounts, but we could invest business together. Like I'll do with my wife. I don't know what people do with their wife, but when I do have a wife, she gonna be doing this. We gonna get some money together. We gonna be like, baby, listen, this is what you gonna do. We gonna teach you how to, I'm gonna teach you some shit. Da, da, da. We gonna get this company together. We gonna da, 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 da. And this is gonna be us. And once that shit grows, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let her do what it do. And if she's really big, I'll let her attach on her. I ain't getting no, I might give her a little percentage, you know, a little two, three percent. I right, here, here's my other company, you could run this right here, you know, a little two, right. three percent, let her do her thing, you know what I'm saying? She got mamas and aunties and cousins and shit, she gonna have to yeah. do her thing for her. So, it's you know, nice to have something to work towards, I think. Yeah, it's later on, I'm, I'm 29. Yeah, I'm 29 right now. I'm Enjoying down. life. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So would you say you're outside? Oh, I'm not. No, I'm not outside. <laughs> ain't no, I ain't slinging no outside dick. There ain't no outside motherfucker. Don't be looking at me like, oh, he outside. I ain't outside. I'm be doing that shit. I'm about to be 30, baby. I ain't about to be out motherfucking side. I used to be outside. I used to be doing that shit back in the day when I was, I don't know, my wild day, I was 18, 19. I'm about to be 30. I'll be outside. I'll be doing that shit. I'll be in the office. <laughs> no, Bobby is not. I'm in the office. Okay, I'm in the office on the plane in the studio and I'm working. I ain't got time for that shit. You know what I'm, <laughs> I'm about to be 30. <laughs> oh, it's the we outside but inside but really we outside vibe, yeah? Are you a romantic person? I got to I got to I'm a passionate person, so yeah. yeah. I'm a I feel like I'm passionate, so I won't say romantic as in like movie romantic. I'm passionate, so they think it's romantic. Yeah. Cause I'm a, you know, rock em off in love with that rock em off in love. <laughs> rock em off in love with it, give me the rock em off in love. She want the rock em off in love, me give her the rock em off in love. What's the most romantic thing you've done? I spent like 20,000 on a motherfucking, I spent like 20,000 on a motherfucking flight to think, um, what's this shit, Mexico, you know, I don't go to Mexico, you hear me? I went to um, motherfucking Mexico, these motherfuckers deported me. They deported me from Mexico, and then she stuck it up with me. She she she, she had the drugs in her bag. She dumped the drugs. Wah. She dumped all the drugs. We spent like spent like twenty. I spent like twenty on the motherfucking thing. I spent like seven thousand. Like twenty seven thousand. They deported me. They gave my money back. None of that. I was like, motherfucking Mexico, back get my motherfucking money back. You know what I'm saying? And 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 she she stood in the room with me, and then we talked, and we took a we took a four hour flight all the way there. We took a four hour flight back, and I had to get it on the back of the flight with her because they fucked up her flight. And I had to get, I don't be riding the coach. I went all the way to coach, flight in the middle of the coach like this, just to chill with her, just to get back to the thing. So it was oh, like wow. the most romantic. We thugged it out, you know what I'm saying? We kept a gangster. Yeah, that gangster love, yeah. That's the romance. Well, I got in a car chase with a couple of girls, so. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm back in the days, I'm back in the days, I'm back. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, you're crazy. <laughs> she had a gun too. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> I swear to God. What do you do to get a woman's attention? If I like a woman, I go up to her and I'm like, yeah. What's that like? Uh, yeah. Yeah, she probably be like, what the fuck? So, you know, she like that. Yeah. But if I don't know, like, I feel cool with a girl, I just like, yeah. I don't really, like, if it's there, it's there. I don't really yeah. care for it. But if I like her, I feel like, yo, I like her. I, I like what's up. I'm saying, I'm sliding that DM. Oh, is it? Yeah? Let's yeah. move to. I'm saying, yeah. trying to see what's up with it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Trying to see what's up with it. <laughs> Would you say you've got game? I don't think I got game. I think I got honesty. Honesty wins over all. Like, I learned that shit from a kid. So yeah. I just be honest, and then it worked for me. So yeah. I was like, fuck that. Have you always been honest? I got years of practice of this shit. So I'm just like. <laughs> what are red flags for you? Um, red flags for me is.
if you asked me to buy you something, we first met. We ain't even had sex yet. You asked me to buy me something. I said, what the fuck? I think you sell pussy now. Hold on. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was this? We had sex. I need all that thing. I need all like you like that. She's like, yeah, but you know, I don't just be out here fucking for free. So you be fucking for free. She's like, yeah, like, man, fuck it, for she. She's like, yeah, fuck it, for she. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I do not need pussy. I don't 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 yeah. Okay, ski you. Check me, you get trying to see what's up. Ski you. <laughs> what is what is your type? Independent body girl. Does what she want, do whatever she want, independent free. Don't give a fuck about nobody. Because girls always tend to, 90, 90% of females tend to think on like, oh, what he's going to say, this going to say. But that 10% or that little 15%, they be on that. <laughs> I like those ones. Those good. I'm like, yeah, I can ride with her. We gonna win. They, they hate the world. Gonna hate us. Nigga. They, they an army. <laughs> Yo, me love some blood clot rule. Get that say. What you mean? Some blood get that say. Y'all stand up, red. <laughs> yeah, that's when they be punk ass. Then you gonna switch on me to punk ass, nigga. Fuck out of here, nigga. You know I'm bad as shit. You better get it over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get your ass a lawyer, son. <laughs> <laughs> what is your freakiest confession? Oh shit. Hold on. The freakiest thing I ever did. I was like 16. Right? I was like 16 with my girlfriend. And we was on like this group home, this group home facility. And then we ran away. And we had ran away with some weed. And we went with some weed. And then she was like a good girl there. And they was like, don't be mad him. He's going to turn you bad. I was like a ex-drug dealer, little badass, and I was flying shit, so I was bad, and all the girls like, ooh, don't turn on being raised, little black ass gonna turn you bad. And she like, I ain't got no shit. So we ran off and shit, and we ran off, and then the fucking people started chasing us from the campus. We had to get low in the woods, and we was in the woods, it was days running around, it was nighttime, I'm like, oh shit, we done, we ducking through the woods, woods and shit, I'm like, yo, baby, some movie shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Going through the woods, and then, um, the first time I had sex with her was in the woods. Oh my God, the good girl. In the woods. In the woods. She's she, she looking at me like, what you doing to me? I'm like, man, what the fuck you doing to me? Yo, what you doing to us? You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I'm saying. Life happened, baby. Life just happens. <laughs> well, we had sex in the woods, man. That shit, that shit was, it was experience. The dads was watching. Squirrels was squirreling. You know, <laughs> motherfucking, we just watching out for the coyotes. You know, them niggas like me. Ah! <laughs> Life's happening. Life's happening, <laughs> But sex in the woods, it was, it was, it was, it was, I had dirt all in my ass and shit, I said, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> I see the dead, I was, uh, I was doing some, I was doing some things I should have said on TV, but then I looked up. <laughs> I, I was doing some things, but I looked up and I see the dead. <laughs> I'd say, what? <laughs> oh, 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 that motherfucker looking. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, look at us. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Live animal right now. Hold on, play. You see animal play? This is niggas be wild. But um, that was the most romantic that I, um, thing I did. Sex in the woods. Romantic. You said romantic or oh, freaky? Yeah. Well, freaky. <laughs> I was say, that is not romantic. Well, freak, that's not freaky. No, it's freaky. I mean, not romantic. Why? Well, I, I had well, I had sex with like seven girls on a jet. Is that freaky? Yeah. Seven girls on a jet. I just came home. I did six years in prison, so I did seven girls on a jet. <laughs> That's when I just came home. I don't like to talk about the things when I just came home. When I just came home, I was, it, was, it was bad. I went celibate after that. I'm telling you, for him to go celibate. I was supposed to be 90 days, but I did 45. But this is my first time, so you know I did over half. Yeah. So that's good. No, it is good. Yeah, 46. I did 46. So how was celibacy? Oh, she was a motherfucker. <laughs> nigga. A nigga was like this. Nigga was like this. I was like this sleeping. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I had to wake up in the middle of the night. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm a back hurt. <laughs> It'd be clogged up. <laughs> I'm a back hurt. <laughs> Dude, we clogged up your back. <laughs> oh shit, I got too much on it, man. I got to release it. <laughs> What's a controversial opinion that you stand on? A controversial opinion that I stand on. 
So um, the blogs, I feel like, I mean, blog, I'm Google. I feel like when people go to their information to Google, to um, like Google people, what the fuck you talking about? Google's bullshit. The Google don't know nobody. Who the fuck is Google? It's, it's somebody who just heard a bunch of information on the blogs that's running trying to get a paycheck to do some shit, and they be listening to Google and shit. So I be like, stop Googling people, y'all. Stop fucking yeah. doing that. Yeah, for real. What the hell wrong with you? Go, go meet somebody and, and get to learn them. Motherfuckers too fast. Yeah. I think we listen to the internet a little too much. <laughs> too much. I think we listen to podcasts. podcasts Especially our as generation. As possible. Yeah. I think our generation needs to, because you know, it, it fucks up a part of our minds a lot. Oh, so big I time. think our generation needs to tighten up more because we are the future. What do you bring to the table? A lot of shit. You like money? <laughs> I'm playing. <with> you. <laughs> but what happens when you find a woman that's not impressed by money? <laughs> um, I bring light and light yeah. men. Enlightenment. I bring enlightenment, um, knowledge, money if you like to get money, and smiles. Yeah. I, I, that's what that's what I believe in. Like just enlightenment, smiles. And once you enlighten me, you smile automatically. I think that like anybody that learns something or just figure something out in their mind, like their brain. I don't know what it's called. Dopamine. The dopamine start running in your brain. It just make you smile. You know. So I think enlightenment. I like that. I bought my things, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the Rasta, but my yard. I'm gonna have no dress, but I'm on a Rasta yeah. one. <laughs> uh, what do you look for in a woman? They like me. Somebody to tell me something, something I can learn something from. I don't want her to be something that I can see any, like, just on the fucking internet. I want her to be something I can learn something from. Something I can grow with. If I can't grow, it ain't no, it's the fuck we doing it for. Ain't no fun, baby, you take that shit down the block. So I like to grow. So once I can grow with it, I feel like that's what I want in a woman. Yeah. Once she can help me grow. Like yeah. even, you know, as I said, pride, she can help like shave the pride off. And if she can help shave pride off, you know what I'm saying? Help yeah. me grow and shit like that. And enlighten me. Enlighten Tell me things. So what's your thoughts on women in today's society and the way that the culture's going? 85% of y'all motherfuckers get this shit together. And then fifty percent, y'all so hard to get. <laughs> oh boy, y'all so hard. <laughs> they can't find y'all nowhere, but it's hard. I know it's hard, and it's hard. So I think the fifteen cent percent, it'd be so hard to find them. But when you get them, you better hold on to that motherfucker, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Cause I get them snatching that motherfucker. Ah, nigga, God. <laughs> yeah, I say so. The dog be looking for the fifteen percent and the eighty-five percent. Ski you. If you see me, don't you try to see you outside? Ski you. <laughs> so you know you gotta look for that 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 diamond in the dirt nowadays. So I feel like it's good. So when you when you get it, you won't want to hold on to it because so much of what's going on and just like look at the rap culture. It's ran by females. Look at it. Yeah. Ski you. <laughs> Thank you. Trying to see what's up. <laughs> what's your thoughts and views on gender roles in a relationship? What's that? So like a man being really traditional, like the provider, the woman being at home cooking and cleaning. Fuck that. We gonna cut together, we gonna ride together, we gonna die together, we gonna cook together, we gonna sleep together, we gonna do whatever we eat together, we gonna make this money together. It'll be my best friend. So she can't be my best friend. Like if I can't be with that person every day, like say growing up, right? Mm -hmm. I was with my niggas every day. So if I can, she can't be my nigga, I always tell my baby, like, you gotta be my nigga before my girl. You gotta be yeah. my nigga. And once you my nigga. It's like we locked in, I ain't even worried about nothing. I'm just like, where well, I'ma go? Man, you take my ass over there, they try to treat me some way, baby. I ain't gonna, yeah, the ass look good, but I ain't going over there, nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it gotta be my nigga. Once you my nigga, we locked in. No, I really like that, because I can't lie, I kind of had the assumption that you probably would have, like, like the bro code would be so strong, but it's nice to hear that, like, you want your woman to be, like, your best friend where you do everything oh, together. Oh, we gonna be raising these little motherfuckers. My, listen, I got some bad, these little motherfuckers be bad in my family. But we, I know my kid's gonna be bad as shit. I came out the pussy bad. So I know my mom always told me, she said, nigga, I should be laughing. I can't wait for you, nigga. I'm like, oh shit, I get scared, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I almost had twins, I told you. I, mean, I almost had twins when I, one time. And I was stuff like, damn, two of them motherfuckers? And they were both about to be little Leo motherfuckers. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. I was have two Leos. I was like, oh shit. And all my hair would have dropped out. <laughs> so I got to have a partner that's gladiator that we locked in. You know what I'm saying? We us against the world. You know what I'm saying? Because we got to build life. We got to build life with them. So it's not like you just doing anything. Like you got to have kids and life and all type of shit with them. So yeah. 
like that. You want to make sure we locked in. Locked in. Fuck you mean? She got to be my best friend. I ask 21 questions. You're 50, nigga. If I was your best friend, I want you around all the time. You, uh, you'll be mine. <laughs> What would you say mm -hmm. your toxic trait is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 I got Jesse in you. All right, so I think too independent is my thing. Oh, yeah? Yes. Too independent is my toxic thing. No, I hear it. Because sometimes they feel like I'm shutting them out. I don't let them do nothing. Or it might think hey, that I'm having somebody else do it. But I'm like, yo, I, I, just, or I feel like, oh, you don't trust me to do it. Or this and I just be like, nah, I'm just used to doing shit on my own. So sometimes. Yeah, it's a That's independence. the relationship I had in my independent, my independent trade. Like, I'm too independent. So I get it. And then they feel like, oh, what he need me for? Just I feel like I'm just a piece of me. I'm like, nah, it's not that. It's just, you know. yeah. so, so do you think that makes it harder for you to then, because you want that relationship where you build together, grow together, have business together. That's why I feel like... Does it make I, it hard? I, think, I feel like if I have that, I won't be as much as independent. Okay. So it's like that hyper-independence by force because it's like, it's easy to just do it yourself. Cause I've been... I'm indoctrinated by doing it myself. I've been doing it myself so long, so I'm just... It's my first hand to do it myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, I got you. I'm like... Yeah. Do you find it hard to ask him for help? Like, would you ask for help if you needed it or would you just like be That's the shape and the pride thing. It? That's the shape and the prop. Yeah. I have stuff for actual motherfuckers. So that's what I think that's my toxic trait. What's been the best date you've ever been on? <coughs> I've been on a double date with me and two girls. Is that good? A double date? What, two girls? <laughs> At the same time? Between. I'm just getting high off the fumes right now. Did you? They was twins. How was that? That's my birthday. Oh. <laughs> Listen, you have more than one freaky confession, I'm telling you. <coughs> I don't want to talk about it until I was a freak. I had to go celibate. I was, I was bad. This guy has got some crazy stories. Like, how can you go and be that freaky that you turn celibate? Love or money? Loyalty. Loyalty. Fuck love, fuck money, loyalty. Loyalty, we, we can lose it and make it back triple times, a hundred times, a million times once you're loyal. If you ain't loyal, you can't do nothing. You understand? We ain't gonna be a guy ain't gonna be a blessing because it's gonna be a crash head in the head. So a guy gonna be like, yeah, I can't put that together because it ain't gonna look good. So loyalty is over everything. Once it's loyal, it's gonna work. So a guy to be loyal to. How do you find loyalty in your lifestyle? Don't tell me what I wanna hear, tell me what I need to hear. But how does that define if she's gonna be loyal? Because I feel like sometimes people could just be calculated. So I feel like when you tell me where I, I need to hit, you tell me reality. You tell me illusions. And then illusions can be illusions just to make you feel better yeah. or something. So you got to tell me reality at all times. Like if you do something bad, you do something bad. Yeah. But I can fuck with you all the time because I know you ain't going to never keep me out the loop. So I ain't ever got to go with my shoulder with you. So if you take you down, I know you down. You know do you mean? find like because of the person that you are, like you have a lot of like yes men around you? I don't keep a lot of men around me. Yeah. Nah, baby, I'm a bad man. From me in the streets, I'm gonna keep bad man around me. I'm gonna keep a bad man. Yeah. Like police, I look at you and thing like that. So I was a bad kid in the streets. When I was in the streets, I was very bad. So I couldn't keep a group of people around me. Yeah. No, I keep them across the street or some shit. I can't be around a group of people. Yeah. And What's I was always busy always busy would you say like because you keep saying you're a bad kid like I personally don't agree with the term like a bad kid I think sometimes it's like the environment that you're in I believe the word bad comes from rebellious when I say bad like when I say yeah. bad man it comes from rebellious and rebellious come from back in the days that you look at Rosa Parks I got Harry Tubman on my own so if you look at like Harry Tubman Rosa Parks um, Matt Turner these type of people it was rebellious but not being rebellious as in violence but being yeah. rebellious as in mental I refuse to be in a mental that you put me in because of my skin color or because of where I come from so you think that I'm supposed to act like this or this is the third I believe to be gangster and be free and do what they say I can't do and smile when I do it <laughs> Thank you.
So at the start of the show, we had to write down assumptions about each other. Um, so before you read mine, I'm just going to let you know, you have way surpassed my expectations. I feel like you are so nice, so humble, really, you're really funny, actually. And That's you just why I tell them to listen to the media. They don't know me. Yeah, like, people really don't. They and know I'm, what they sell. And I'm really, really happy that you came today. I've had a really good time, so. Thank you. Oh, she like me? She like, hi. Ah, what's your name? She, I, think she, you know, I think she like me. You like me? I like you too. <laughs> Do you want to read what I had to say about you? <laughs> I thought lady was supposed to be first. Okay, right. This is what you thought about me. She's still waiting to learn how to love. That's true. Wait, you got to read it loud, baby. No, no, let them know. Let them know who I am. Read oh, to yeah. the camera yeah. and read it loud. She's still waiting to learn how to love. Oh. P.S. I dropped out the fifth grade. Don't laugh at my handwriting. XOXO. I would not. I think it's good. <laughs> it's good? Yeah, it's good, considering you dropped out of fifth grade. <laughs> it is. Ah, 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 oh, no, I feel bad. Now you're going to read mine. Oh, shit, she about to break my heart. <laughs> I know. <laughs> she done broke my heart. <laughs> she done broke yeah. my heart. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me get a sip before this. Let me yeah, get a sip take before a sip. This. Let me get a sip before yeah. this. Fuck boy. <laughs> Overly hood. I don't even know how to read the third one. I can't remember what I said. What the fuck is that? It's, it's, a, it's a what? Eccentric. What the fuck is that? You. I'm sorry. I was just like hurt off of that, all right? And I mean, she putting words I don't even know. I told her about that big word shit before I came <laughs> on, you know? It, but it lightened me. I like when a girl lighten me. That make me, that make me smile. Yeah. And she started teaching me shit. I'm like, oh, you gonna be teaching me shit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You gonna be teaching me something? Yeah. Like you, gonna you gonna teach me something? I'm gonna teach you something. All right, and number four, crazy and unpredictable. I can see number four now. Yeah? But I'm not a fuck boy. I'm no, not yeah. overly hood. And how you say this word again? Eccentric. And so that's my new word, eccentric. She taught me that. Okay. Ah. <laughs> yeah, she taught me that. And crazy, unpredictable. I can but see in that. The fun way. I can see that. I can see the crazy, yeah. unpredictable. You know, people be like, since my whole life I came out the baby, I'm like, what the fuck are you looking at? Like, <laughs> they be like, did I, did I, which ones did I beat? Am I a fuck boy? <laughs> uh, well, you had that phase. Huh? It took so there. long. It took you so long to answer. <laughs> Am I a fuck boy? Tell them to the camera. You gotta let them know. He was. I was. Was changed man now. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, thank you so much for coming. We're Hold on, we ain't done. We're not done. Am I overly hood? Was. Was. <laughs> This is the eccentric part. Am, <laughs> am I eccentric? What's eccentric? You. What's that mean? See how like you are, your mannerisms. Girls need excitement. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for coming today. We'll uh, do a little cheers. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Bobby. Hold on, come on, let's wrap it. Oh yeah, this way. Let's wrap it. <laughs> that was very different. <laughs> the date, um, I think I, I would want to go on a date three, four hundred more times. Baby, just live. Call me. We can get together sometime. Call me. <laughs> this guy, he's got energy. I don't think I can keep up. Would I like to see Shasha again? Only time with her. I give nicknames when I like somebody. What do you think Shasha's going to rate you out today? Different. Unrated. And do you think you can correct I think she can correct me. I do need some correcting. Ling a little loose. Only time with her. Take your time, baby. Be patient. So, what am I gonna rate Bobby, Mr. Schmurder? Um, I really liked his energy. I feel like his, he has got a lot of substance to him. I, I'm not gonna dismiss that there are a few red flags there, um, but he is a businessman. So, for that, I'm gonna give Bobby Schmurder a 8.1.